What's up guys? So I wanted to make another history video, and this time talk about Cardinal Richelieu. And I wanted to talk about him because I think he's a very important figure in the history of foreign policy. He's the person who pioneered the idea of a national self-interest. The idea that a country has a set of goals, and that it's the job of the diplomat to look out for those goals. He was the person who pioneered this idea, and because it was so innovative at the time, he was able to establish the power of France in Europe for the next 200 years because of it. So let's go into some background and try to understand why Cardinal Richelieu was so important. Let's talk a bit about who he was and the time in which he lived. So Cardinal Richelieu's real name was Armand Jean Duplessis, and he was the first minister of France from 1624 to 1642. And as first minister, he was something like the prime minister of the country. He was in charge of the foreign policy of the kingdom, as well as some aspects of its domestic policy. He had this job delegated to him by the king, um, who, by the way, at the time was Louis XIII. The other thing we have to keep in mind was Richelieu lived during the wars of religion in Europe. This was a time when the Protestants and Catholics were fighting each other, especially in Central Europe. Statistically, the worst affected place was Germany, where some places lost up to 30 to 50 percent of their population due to these wars. The Catholics were trying to destroy Protestantism entirely, and the Protestants were using their religion as a kind of political tool to achieve independence. So the wars of religion are both a spiritual struggle for a more privatized religion, as well as a political struggle for independence. A good example is if you know the history of Henry VIII, for instance, he couldn't divorce his wife without the consent of the Pope. So the reason England became Protestant was because it gave the king more power to be able to make his own decisions and grant himself a divorce. So the wars of religion were both spiritual as well as political. But Richelieu was from France, and France was not Protestant. He was Catholic. At the time, it was arguably the most powerful Catholic country. And the critical and dramatic decision made by Richelieu was to take France, a Catholic country, and support the Protestant side in the wars of religion. And the reason he did this was he took the country's political interests and raised them above, made them superior to the country's spiritual interests. Um, and this was a decision that was so dramatic, so avant-garde, that it completely took people by surprise. And because it was so surprising, this is what made it successful. And Richelieu's decision changed for centuries what would be the fate of Europe. Um, if a less audacious person was in charge of French diplomacy at this time, France would very likely have supported the Catholic side in the wars of religion, and the history of Europe would have turned out completely different. Um, the reason Germany did not unify as one country, the reason why France was the most powerful country on the continent for the next 200 years, was because of this decision of Richelieu at this critical time. But why did Richelieu do what he did? He was a cardinal. He was a clergyman educated in the Catholic Church and inculcated with its tradition. Um, but he made this decision not based on spiritual reasons, but based on political reasons. And if we look at the situation for France at the time, we can start to understand the logic of what he did. So here's a map. <clears throat> we have France, and it has basically two frontiers. It has a southern frontier with Spain, and it also has a long eastern frontier as well. And this eastern frontier is with a very unique country, um, which is known as the Holy Roman Empire. Um, so the empire was not a unified country like England was, or France or Spain were. It was basically a collection of small, independent countries that, in name, were all subject to an emperor. But the emperor had no literal power. The empire consisted of today what would be Germany, the Netherlands, Northern Italy, Austria, and the Czech Republic. And one of the reasons it was decentralized was due to the limits of technology at the time and the ability for a message to get from one part of the realm to another. Um, 
but we'll also see that the interference of outside countries in keeping the empire decentralized also played a role. Um, examples of this would be France, Sweden, Denmark. All of these countries would fight against the emperor um, whenever he tried to unify uh, the Holy Roman Empire. So the emperor at the time uh, was a member of the House of Habsburg. I talked about them briefly in one of my other videos. Um, and Spain also at the time was ruled uh, by a member of the House of Habsburg. Um, so to apply a modern term to this picture, we can say that France is dealing with a situation of encirclement. Um, or to use another term, it is dealing with a situation of containment. Um, if it fights a war, which in pre-nuclear times was inevitable, it was going to have to fight wars, um, it would have to fight a um, potential war on two fronts against two enemies, against a Spanish Habsburg to its south and against a German Habsburg to its east. So it's in France's interest to undermine these two neighbors whenever possible to look after its own well-being. So let's move from here and look at the Holy Roman Empire. And in terms of foreign policy, we have to talk about the danger which existed for France at the time if Germany unified. Um, as we know, in real life, Germany did not unify until 1871. We know that once it did, if we think about World War I and World War II, we know that once unified, Germany is a scourge. Um, compared to France, it is superior economically, militarily, in terms of population, it has more people. Once unified, France immediately becomes a secondary power when it is put next to Germany. And France in the 20th century also finds itself unable to defend itself without alliances. So from there on in, France can only ever exist with an alliance um, which is defensive in nature and de directed against Germany. Um, so this is what Richelieu had the prescience to foresee. Um, he understood the danger of Germany becoming unified during the time he was living. And he understood that if the Catholic emperor was successful in his religious mission, which was to wipe out the Protestant cause in the empire, he was also going to succeed on his political mission as well. And his political goal was to unify a German state, which would be um, a Catholic Germany rather than a Protestant Germany like Bismarck created. And what this would have led to, um, um, a good analogy would be to East Asia, for example. Um, and in Europe, for most of its history, you have this situation in which you have all these different competing small countries fighting each other. Um, but in Asia, you always had a very different situation. Um, instead of a balance of power, you had one superpower. And for Asia, for most of its history, this power was China. Um, China was overwhelmingly more powerful than all of its neighbors. It was an, an economic, cultural, and military hegemon, and it sort of subordinated all the other powers around it because of this overwhelming strength. And if in the 17th century, the Holy Roman Empire had unified, you would have likely seen a situation comparable to this in Europe, um, with France, for example, becoming something like Korea was relative to China, or England becoming what Japan was to China. Um, these countries reduced to second-class status compared to a new superpower. So I'd like to go more into the history of this in another video, but I wanted here just to talk about the political rationale to what Richelieu did and why it was so um, intelligent. Um, but I'd like to carry on this discussion more in another video. Um, so to surmise, 
Richelieu significantly changed the way diplomats conducted themselves in the realm of foreign policy. He took his country's spiritual interests and he subordinated them to its political interests. And this created the idea of national self-interest. He was one of the figures who helped European countries behave more like modern nation states and less like medieval ones. And that was his contribution to the history of foreign policy. Um, so this is what I wanted to go over. Um, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you again.